Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Before this video begins, I would like to disclaimer that yes, the entire left side of this room is a mess because I am still renovating and I haven't had a chance to clean it up. But I, I feel like I need to make this video. It seems, it just seems important to me. So I'm mainly just going to film the wall today. Plus I have some other projects going on, but that shouldn't detract from the point of this video, which is to get a, get a message across. Like, yes, bro, what are you doing? What are you? What are you doing, Hasbro? Why are you doing this? I don't understand. I, let me, okay, I, I'm mad. I need to take a break. Let me go get a bottle of water. Now there's a bottle of water in the middle of the floor for no reason. I have many points that I would like to put across because I legitimately do not think that my dependence on the Nerf community has now relied on blasters like this, which are being sold by a different company. I, 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 I want that logo. You see this? See this? Can you make that up? Can you see it? Can you see it? It's right there. It's right there. Come on, focus. Yeah, that's the Nerf logo. I want that to be on blasters that I want to play with. And yet, it isn't. Why is this camera refusing to focus? Thank you. So, yeah. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is this logo right here. This is the Nerf Ultra series. And I have most of the release blasters. I say most of them, because I legitimately can't even figure out when these blasters are going to exist. And that's kind of where I'm going to start off. Why is the release date for blasters so unbelievably bad? And I believe I have talked about this before, but if you didn't hear that video, or I just forgot to upload that video, or whatever, let me break it down for you. Why is it that two years ago, when this and that were going to be released, there was a Toy Fair presentation. The blasters were on the shelf. Better example, the Twin Shock. I was super excited for this because I saw it at the Toy Fair. It was going to come out. It was so sick. And then it finally came out. They had a given release date for every blaster that was going to come out. And then they came out on the release date. We rushed to Walmart. We got those blasters as fast as possible. I got this as soon as I possibly could. And the same thing goes for the Percy's. I got it for Christmas that year. The Titan, even though it sucks, I got it for Christmas. I'm probably gonna sell that because it, it's legitimately one of the worst blasters I've ever seen in my life. Also, if you if you hear a background buzzing noise, I'm terribly sorry, that's the water heater. It's right there, right there. But yeah, you, you get the point. There was a presentation, there was a reveal, there was, a, uh, there was a thing at Toy Fair, and then a few months later, in fall of that year, the blasters would all come out. You had time to get excited over them, and then be prepared when they finally shipped. I need another drink of water. Nowadays, stuff just starts existing for some reason without any word or even any, like, hint that they would possibly exist before. Like, there is a fourth hyper blaster. That's right, one came out, and you probably don't even know that it exists. It's called the Fuel 20, I believe. It's basically a smaller one of these that costs $20, but why? Why don't I know about that? I studied the Hyper Series from the beginning of conception to launch, and I got the three blasters that existed. I know that, that Walmart or Amazon did a repaint of the Siege. I'm not gonna get one because the Siege isn't very good, but you, you get the point. And then they came out with another brand new Hyper Blaster. No word or hint about it. I didn't even know it existed until yesterday. Yesterday! I guess this thing's been out for weeks and I didn't even know about it. But yeah, I saw it on Amazon yesterday and I'm just, I'm so disappointed. Why? Why don't they tell us this? The whole reason why Hasbro's business was so good in the first place was because of the way that they presented their blasters to the community. Like, even if it's bad stuff like the Flip 16, let me explain the, let me explain the dominant strategy. You get good blaster, you hype it up, you give it whatever teaser you want, you put out the pictures, you put it at Toy Fair, People will want it. There will always be somebody who wants that. Even if it's not a majority of people. People will still want this. They'll still want this. And then when it comes out, they will be excited about it. Because they'll have been waiting that several months for the blaster to develop and then release. And when they go to Target that day and they see that, that brand new Phoenix or whatever sitting on the store shelf, you betcha they're going to be excited about it. But not if they don't even know what it is because there was no conception beforehand. It just doesn't make any sense. 
and they keep doing this kind of stuff. I mean, the Ultra series is kind of an exception because they did have a presentation for the Ultra 1, but like even then, the Scream Machine and the Select just started existing. I literally only saw this one time, one time on Target's store shelf, and I've never seen another one since. I'm being serious. That was last year I found the Select at a Walmart and I was shocked. I thought I discovered something new, but no. The blaster just released without a designated release date and without any conception beforehand. Nothing. No commercials. Nothing. It existed and then the commercials started coming out. Why? It gets even worse when they do this with blasters that are supposed to be big flagships like the Moto Blitz. And I, I can tell you that is a flagship Elite 2.0 blaster, but I do not own one. I don't have one to show you because I didn't have any chance to save up enough money to buy one for when it was going to exist. That's partially how I got so many of these. When they started like releasing them, or when they started the, the conception and the thing at Toy Fair, then I started saving up my money. And I put my money with my parents' money and we got the blasters. That's how I have this giant collection. But I can't do that anymore. And that's partially why I have so many, so few blasters from this generation and so many from the old generations. Like I only have two Mega XLs. I don't know where the boom dozer is. I can't find it anywhere. I've got the three hypers. I've got the, the helix. I've got the side swipe. That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't have much else other than maybe the flip series, if you count that. But even then, it's like, what the heck, Hasbro? Why do you keep doing this? I mean, uh, I'm getting winded. It was because of the fun commercials and the fun advertising that I got excited for stuff like this beautiful piece of garbage. And I, I, I'm so disappointed in the Titan. Like, I'm, you have no idea. And that's probably the biggest problem. Because of the way that the blasters are being released nowadays, Hasbro doesn't have time to show people the good in the blasters and the bad in the blasters. There's no honesty until people inevitably find them for themselves and maybe happen to stumble across one that's a reviewer. Let's take a look. Let's give an example. A really big reviewer is reviewing Nerf guns, and they don't just so happen to find one of these, these unleaked, unknown blasters somewhere in one of their stores and they don't know that it exists. How are they supposed to do a review on it if they don't even know what it is? Do you understand my problem? If people don't know what the blasters are going to do, why would they buy them? I was super skeptical on the Moto Blitz. I saw it at the store and I could have saved up and gotten it, but I didn't know what it did because the reviews for it came out weeks later, weeks. And even then, there are still blasters that aren't getting reviews, even though they exist. And I believe I even have some of them. I couldn't tell you where they are because I legitimately lost them. But here, okay, here's, here's an example. Here's an example. Here's an example. This. This is the Trailblazer. I legitimately bought this because it was so cool looking and because it was a hammer shot with eight darts. That alone was enough reason for me to pick one of these up. The reviews for this didn't come until three full weeks, three weeks and two days after I bought it for myself. That is three weeks and two days, almost a month after the blaster released, or at least after I happened to find one at the store, that's when reviews started popping up. Why? Why is it so hard just to put out a big Twitter email? Big Twitter email, or even a post on your official website. The website that does not even showcase the blasters that you are releasing. Why is it so hard to go on that website and put a big flag right across the front page of the screen that says, new blasters for 2022. Have a list that looks like this where you have all the blasters just shown right up there. It doesn't have to have the wall or anything, but just a white background, but just something to show them off. And they're not there. You can't see them because they were lazy. They didn't put any marketing into any of their new blasters. And what happens? Nobody knows about them until way later when they're already obsolete. Did it? <sighs> 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 I also don't understand what happened 
to the originality of blasters either. You see this, this blue turret gun looking thing right here? That's the Rhino Fire. The Rhino Fire is one of my favorite blasters of all time. Not because it's practical, because in terms of practicality, I mean, we've got this one right here. That thing blows the Rhino Fire right out of the water. However, it was something practical and creative. They combine practicality with a funny gimmick. They give a turret gun aesthetic to a rapid strike. That's cool. People wanted that. People liked that. And then, more recently, they've just been giving the gimmick with no practicality or the practicality with no gimmick. Basically segregating two different sides of the nerf community apart from each other. Like, the whole Hyper series is designed to be 100% practical, 0% gimmicky. What did they do? They gave us a bad Percy's, they gave us a pistol that actually blows everything else out of the water, and they gave us whatever the heck. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have stuff like the Flip series, which is really fun to play with, but they're so expensive and have no, no rain in the nerfing world. I mean, you are not going to use this in an effective battle. It shoots four shots without having to take your hand off and prime it back like that just to shoot the, X, the other four shots. And it weighs like a pound and it's literally bigger than my head. That's ridiculous. You're not going to use that. You're not going to use the flip 16. You're not going to use the flip 32. Don't kid yourself. If you're going to use an Elite 2.0 blaster, you're either going to be using the Turbine or the Moto Blitz. Guaranteed! Because those blasters are practical, but they don't have the fun gimmicks that the Flip series has. So, to enjoy one, you gotta sacrifice the other. And that's not fair, because Hasbro didn't used to do that. I mean, they made stuff like the Scravenger. That's cool! That's fun! You see that yellow thing right there? That's a lever action prime. They put a lever action prime blaster that basically is a better version of the sling fire. They put it in a cool modulus series, modulus sub series of zombie strike, even though the other one in that series is terrible, but we're not going to talk about that. And then I like it. I really like the scavenger. It's one of the coolest blasters I've ever seen. And I still like playing with it. I still like using it. Stuff like the Saturn. I mean, this is one of the last examples I could find. It's a practical shotgun that looks absolutely incredible. God, look at this. It's beautiful. Now, you could potentially make an argument that, well, if you have a working Titan, that is basically just a rapid strike, but with a fun barrel gimmick. Okay, but that doesn't excuse why it's four feet long, costs $100, actually no, on Amazon it's $400 now, and I can get this right here, which is way better and more effective, for $40. It's easier to hold, it's easier to use, it's just more enjoyable in general, and even when I first got the Titan, and it worked okay, it wasn't fun. It was a rapid strike. It was obsolete. Stuff like the turbine existed. And even though the turbine came out a year later, there's this thing called the hyperfire that also existed. And if you don't like to look at that, there's this other thing called the regulator that existed. Stuff was above and beyond what the Titan was doing before the Titan even released. There's no excuse you can make. I mean, like, look at the Mastodon. I love the Mastodon. It's super fun. You can use it practically in a Nerf Mega-specific war, but it's just so big and chunky and fun and enjoyable to hold, enjoyable to use. It sounds hilarious. It sounds cool. I mean, I mean, for God's sake, Hasbro. It just sounds like it needs to be shooting way harder than it actually is. And it does, it, granted, it does shoot pretty hard, but just like, look at it. It looks like a submarine. Now it's time to combine these two points together. The ones that I've been making through the video. The bad marketing campaign mixed with segregated blasters for two different audiences. What happens? It ends up being a nightmare for a consumer. Let's say you go to the store and you find something that you think is going to be super practical in a Nerf War. That's what you want. You want something like like a budget Nexus Pro, even though that's that's like in an entire different league of its own, which doesn't really make sense. So let's better example: the turbine. Something practical like the turbine. You see the Moto Strike, for example. You don't know what it is. You think it's going to be cool. It's a it's a Mega Strife. People have been wanted the people have been wanting a Mega Strife. You buy it and it ends up not being what you want. It ends up being gimmicky. Well, what are you going to do with it? You're not going to use it. So now you've got a blaster that you're not going to play with in your collection. 
or on the other side of the spectrum. Let's say that you're somebody like the, uh, the, 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 the somebody who wants a gimmick. Uh, stuff like the Duminator. Look at this. You're never gonna use this effectively. Look how ridiculous the barrel system is. Well, you see the Hyper Series. You think, that looks really cool. It's hopper fed and it shoots these tiny little rubber balls. That could be fun to play with. And it ends up just being practical and you don't end up having fun with it because the prime is ridiculously hard. Well, there you go. Now you've got four blasters that you don't really play with outside of very, very specific occasions. And this is the case for pretty much everything nowadays. Trying to find blasters that you will actually want is a pain in my rear end beyond anything that you could possibly imagine. I mean, there are very, very few examples of blasters that I think hit the same mark that the Rhino Fire did when it came to a combination of originality and or, originality, practicality, and gimmicks. These three things right here. First one, these two blasters. These ones right here, mainly this one, because this one's just kind of weird. But let's take a look at the Helix. It's big, it's fun, it's playful. It's got a ridiculous gimmick that you can do this. It's hopper fed, so it's practical. And it's a rival blaster, so it shoots really hard. It's fun, I love the Helix. Same thing goes with the side swipe, even though I have some serious jamming issues with it. When it doesn't jam, it's okay. It's okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's okay when it doesn't jam. And also for anybody with OCD between cuts, yes, I fixed this, don't worry about it. But yeah, there are the other ones that I can possibly think of are maybe the Ultra 7, the Ultra Pharaoh. That thing's fun. Maybe the really big, the, the boom dozer of the, the Vega XL, which I don't know where it is. I can't find it anywhere. And then the Select but I can still make an argument for the Select because the entire Ultra series has just been practical and then all of a sudden they introduced that this one can do this without warning. It just can do a weird gimmick that not very many people are gonna like. It's just, oh, this is really hard on me, man. I honestly think I've made my point abundantly clear. I don't know why Hasbro keeps doing this terrible marketing campaign. And I just want to put this out as a constructive criticism video. I don't want to be mad. I want to be happy as a way better example of people who, who do marketing way better than Hasbro does. Take a guess which company I'm going to reference. Three, two, one, Primetime Toys. Every blaster that Dart Zone has been releasing has come fully equipped with a fun, get excited commercial that just shows the blaster what it looks like, and what it's going to do. That's what people want. They don't want lies. They don't want crap. They just want to know about the blasters. They want to know what is this next blaster that's going to come out and what is it going to do for me on the field. That's what Dart Zone is doing. And they're doing a damn good job at doing it. I don't understand why they can do that but this billion, billion dollar company with that logo right there, that copyrighted patented logo is unsuccessful at doing the same thing. I just, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand anymore. I understand the concept of big business means big marketing campaign, but, but why? why? Why is it so deliberately hard just to see what the new blasters are going to be? It, it shouldn't be so difficult, but it just, it just is. That's all I really have to say. I don't have too much else to say about this topic because I feel like I've already brought everything up. So I'm just gonna give my outro and then be done. If you guys have any ideas for anything better that Hasbro could be doing involving a marketing campaign, please, for the love of all things great and small, don't tell me, tell them. Find ways to tell them, like, just, just, just help them out here, because they seem to be struggling a lot, and I, I don't want to say that, but they really are, because it's really hard for me to be a Nerf review channel, and there really haven't been any videos in weeks, because I can't find anything to talk about. Nothing that I have is interesting to talk about anymore. It's always just either super practical or super gimmicky and everybody already knows about them because I can't get my hands on new blasters that people haven't seen yet to do reviews on. 
So if I make videos, they're already obsolete. Many people have already done reviews on them. And I can't get my hands on the new ones because I don't know if they're even going to exist or not. Just why? Just why? Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed. I'm so tired. I need to go take a nap. Bye.